Hello and welcome to another episode of Apocalypse. Tips. I'm your host, Richard Muller. Today, we're going to talk about going vegan and or vegetarian. What a time to try new dietary lifestyles, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> I said, am I right? Full disclosure, I am neither vegan nor vegetarian, but I've dabbled in both, and I would say about 95% of my groceries are vegetarian, so that kind of makes me an expert on both, <laughs> don't you think? But in all seriousness, I think a lot of people try to dive into these diets and quit animal products cold turkey, and then so they end up relapsing. So I'm here to talk about some steps and transitions that I've taken to ease my way into this lifestyle. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm shirtless, this is actually a suggestion from my mom. She said, I noticed that you get 30 times as many likes on your pictures when you're shirtless than in your educational videos. Maybe you should try doing your video shirtless and maybe more people would like them. Thanks for the advice, mom. I'll try it out and see how it goes. Without further ado. So my first piece of advice is to eat less fast food and eat more groceries that you bought at the store. It, it's to buy more groceries. First of all, obviously fast food is known for not being that great for you. There's been improvements over the years, but definitely overall there's still a lot of meat products inside of fast food. And when you buy groceries, you have a lot more control over what your body intakes. So, let's take a look in my refrigerator to see some of the groceries that I've gotten lately. You can see here, you know, at the grocery store I can get vegan cheese or, um, you know, eggs, which are not vegan, but at least vegetarian. Vegan butter for cooking with. Oh, you know, I got my good old inexpensive canola oil for cooking with. Uh, you can see my produce. Oh, I'm running low on produce. But imagine that this were filled with like other greens and lots of stuff like that. Kale would be right here and uh, spinach would be back there. We've got some ginger so that I can have ginger with my ramen. Oh, this is empty. That's so sad. The second step that I would recommend is replacing traditional cow's milk with some sort of vegan alternative. Full disclosure, this is actually my roommate's oats milk that I'm using for the demonstration. Usually, I'll get cashew almond blends or straight up almond milk. The cashew almond blend has a lot of protein in it, so if that is there, that's usually what I'll go for. And it's creamier too. I used to drink one to two gallons of milk a week, so taking milk out of my diet was a huge step towards veganism. So, if you do a lot of baking, you probably need to use a lot of eggs to help keep your cakes and your pies together. But, some vegan alternatives that can do that include applesauce. This isn't actually applesauce, but it's the same color as applesauce, so let's just pretend that it's applesauce. Bananas. I don't actually have any bananas right now, so pretend that this apple is actually a banana. And, you can take powdered chia and or flax seeds and soak them in water and it creates a substance that also helps adhere your pies and other baked goods together just like eggs. My final tip are some protein alternatives for your diet. As humans we have to have what are called complete proteins in our diets which means there's a lot of food that has protein in it, but it isn't necessarily a complete protein and that it has all of the amino acids that we need. Some vegetarian options of complete proteins include milk, eggs, and cheese. I also don't have cheese, so pretend that I was holding up cheese just now. And some vegan options of complete proteins include soy products like tempeh and tofu, flaxseed and or chia seed, and quinoa. But if you want to be vegan, you can get the complete protein by mixing grains and legumes. Some options for that include having pasta with peas, having peanut butter on toast, or doing tortillas with beans. Always a classic. Having oatmeal with nuts in it. I don't actually know if that's good. Let me know if that's good. I haven't actually done that one before. 
And now there are also a lot of faux meat alternatives. Faux sausages, faux hamburgers. I've got some faux hamburgers that I'm probably gonna eat later. Oh, I can't wait for that. Faux eggs, faux etc. <laughs> Do they taste exactly like meat? No. But they don't taste bad. Actually, the Impossible Burger does taste a lot like me. If you haven't gotten a chance to try that uh, and you want to treat yourself to a meal out, try the Impossible Burger. And that concludes this episode of Pocket Tips about going vegan and or vegetarian. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, tips, advice, da 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 da, please leave it in the comments below. Always feel free to like and subscribe to support your boy. If you want, like and subscribe. And last but not least, a shameless plug of my girl Kamitria's book about going vegan, A Southern Girl's Guide to Plant-Based Eating by Kamitria Hill. I'll include the link in my bio. Until next time, see you later. Bye. You guys, do you really think I'm going to get more views because I was shirtless?